Welcome to another video. Let's take this integral of arctan of cosine over 1 minus sine x from pi to 3 pi over 2. So, um, you would wonder that a u substitution would be a good thing to do here, but this is arctan and I know there might be other manipulations that you could do, but what I decided to do straight off from seeing the problem was to just, I knew that it was easy for me to differentiate arctan, so I said this must be integration by parts. Well, it worked out well. It's just out of some series of trig substitutions and simplifications. Let's get into the video. So by doing integration by parts, I said, let my u be all of this and let dv be dx. So I said, by integration by part, by integration by parts. Okay, some people say, don't say IBP. Well, what do you want me to say? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so by IBP, I say, let u be all of this, arctan of cosine x over one minus sine x, because I know how to differentiate this. And the good thing about this is differentiation is always possible for almost every function that we know. Okay, so I know I can differentiate this, and then that means that u, so if u is this, then I can find du. Okay, we're going to find du later. And then we say let dv, dv, come on, dv equals dx. Okay, so that um, v will be equal to, if we integrate dx, we're just going to get x. Okay, so it looks like we're good. Okay. So the only problem is this one. We need to know what du is. I hope I left enough space. So the biggest task in this video is how to differentiate arctan cosine x over one minus sine x, okay? But we know that this is gonna be the chain rule. We're gonna differentiate arctan and we're also gonna differentiate from, that's the outside, and then we're gonna differentiate the inside which will require the use of the quotient rule. So it is the chain rule plus the quotient rule. Okay, so let's do it. So we know that u prime is going to be the derivative of arctan, which we know is one over one plus x squared. Okay, uh, one plus one over the square of the argument. Okay, uh, which is gonna be one over 1 plus cosine x over 1 minus sine x squared. This is the first part. That's the derivative of arctan. We keep the same argument, okay? Remember that if you differentiate um, arctan x, arctan x, if you take the derivative, it is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So because the argument here is all of this. That's why we, instead of writing just x squared, we're going to write this squared. Well, multiplied by the derivative of x, which is usually 1, but in this case, it's going to be multiplied by the derivative of cosine x. Come on. Cosine x over 1 minus sine x prime. So the derivative of the inside. And that's what we're going to do now. Okay, let's clean this up. I have to simplify this. Now this is cosine squared x over one minus sine x squared. So I can actually rewrite this as cosine squared x, and this can be one minus sine x squared, like this. Okay, so I've squared this, and now I have to differentiate this. But by squaring this, it means I can simplify this um, Make giving it a common denominator, this one I can write as one minus sine x squared 
over one minus sine x squared. This is the better way to write it because now I've given both terms um, a common denominator, which is one minus x, one minus sine x quantity squared. Now, you see that I can put these two together on top and then um, I'll have a single denominator which I can flip and take up here. So the next line is gonna be something like this. It's gonna be one minus sine x quantity squared over, now in the denominator I'm gonna have just this part, which is gonna be one minus two sine x plus sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Nice. And that's all this is going to give us. And here I need to take the derivative using the quotient rule. So I'm going to say this is multiplied by the quotient rule says differentiate the top times the bottom. So it's going to be the derivative of this which is negative sine x times the bottom which is 1 minus sine x minus keep the top cosine x times the derivative of the bottom the derivative of this will be zero minus cosine x so it's just times negative cosine x negative cosine x okay and everything divided by the square of the denominator which is one minus sine x squared quantity squared so now looking at what we have this guy cancels this guy out. And that's when I knew I was doing the right thing. Because when things start getting simpler, as you go further in the game, then you know that you're doing it right. Okay, so here we go. Now on top now, I'm gonna have negative sine x plus sine squared x. So I have negative sine x plus sine squared x. And then I'm going to have plus cosine squared x plus cosine squared x, okay. And in the bottom, this is the only group I have. I know that the sum of these two is gonna be one, or maybe I should just write it. So this is gonna be one minus two sine x plus sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Well, it looks like, is this something? Oh. <laughs> I thought I was ready to cancel the top and the bottom. They're not exactly the same. Can you see that? Oh, this even has two. Huh. We can't even cancel. There's no way you can make this the same as this. So you know what I'm going to do? I know this is supposed to give me 1, so it's going to be 1 minus sine x. Okay, so I might write this as 1 minus sine x. Okay? Now in the denominator here, since I know everything up here is 1 minus sine x, let me try and rewrite this cosine squared x as 1 minus sine squared x. Okay? Because I know the minus sine squared x is going to take this guy. Oh, that's it. So it's going to be, watch this. This is going to be 1. I'm going to erase it. It's going to be 1 minus 2 sine x plus sine squared x. Now this is now going to be 1 minus sine squared x. So this takes this guy out. What you have left is 1 plus 1 minus 2 sine x. So it's going to be... 2 minus 2 sine x, which is the same thing as if you factor out the 2, you're going to get 2, 1 minus sine x. That's B-E-A-U-T-F-O-L. You can just cancel this out. <laughs> and guess what? This whole crazy thing we've been trying to do, our U prime, the U, is just one over two. If we cancel these two guys out, this is equal to one half. So this integration is a lot easier than you could imagine.
So now I can say that let this guy be, um, let's call it I. So we can say that I equals the integral of u dv, which is equal to uv minus v integral of du. Well, that's the integration by parts formula, and that's what we're going to substitute in now. Nice. So, in order to evaluate this integral, oh, excuse me, without the boundaries, now, now I have to introduce the boundaries. If I introduce the boundaries, tap, ta da da tap, tap, you know what? I'm going to say, let me make it cleaner. <laughs> so, I'm going to evaluate this from pi to 3 pi over 2, and this is going to be integrated from pi to 3 pi over 2, and this is going to be from pi to 3 pi over 2. So this is what we're trying to evaluate. Now, I'm going to do it here. So I'm getting rid of this. So this integral is basically, we're going to use this. It is u times v evaluate from, evaluated from pi to 3 pi over 2. So what is u? We got u to be 1 half. And what is v? v is... No, no, no. u is this. Oh, it's the giant one. And what is v? v is x. So it's the product of this and this. So it's basically x times arctan of cosine x over 1 minus sine x. Huh evaluated from pi to 3 pi over 2 minus this integral. No, why is it v integral du? That's just a terrible formula I wrote. <laughs> wow, how, how did I come up with that? That's terrible. So that's going to be minus the integral of v du. <laughs> I apologize. Pi, 3 pi over 2. Okay, um, since v is a variable, we cannot get rid of it. Now, v is x, so it's going to be the integral of x um, times du. What is du? Oh, I see, that's what was going on in my head. du is 1 half. So instead of writing the 1 half here, we can write it outside. You know, we can just put our 1 half here. 1 over 2. Okay, so... Um, but we know if we integrate this, it's going to be half of x squared. Half of x squared times one half is going to be um, one fourth of x squared. So one over four x squared. You know what? I'm going to just, you've seen the integration, right? One over four x squared evaluated from pi to 3 pi over 2. Okay, so let's begin. 3 pi over 2 here, that's going to be 3 pi over 2 multiplied by arc 10 of cosine 3 pi over 2 is 0. Sine 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So this is going to be 1 minus minus 1, which is 2. So 0 over 2 is 0. So this is arc tan 0. Oh, nice. So arc tan 0 minus, if we do this pi, it's going to be pi times arc tan of, what is cosine pi? It's negative 1. What is sine pi? Sine pi is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. So it's negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. Octan negative 1. Nice. Oh, so this is the first part. Okay. Minus 1 over 4. Okay, we have this giant parenthesis. The square of this is going to be 9 pi squared over 4. 9 pi squared over 4 minus the square of this, put it here, is going to be um, just pi squared. Yeah, 
pi squared. Okay, let's clean up. We know this is gonna, octan of zero is zero, zero times this is zero, so we got zero minus, octan of negative one is negative pi over four. So this is negative pi over four times negative pi is going to be positive pi squared over four. Ah, minus, okay, we got the first part. Minus one over four of, this is gonna be nine pi squared minus four pi squared over four. So that's gonna be five pi squared over four. Five pi squared over four. Okay, what does this give me? This gives me pi squared over four minus five pi squared over 16. Huh, okay, so in order to make the two denominators the same, I can multiply this by four, and then this becomes 16. Oh, what do we have? We have four pi squared minus five pi squared. That's gonna be negative pi squared over 16. And this is the value of this integral. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.